Well then folks, uh, this is start of the rebuild, part 2 of the GX270. Um, <clears throat> you may probably have seen in one of the other videos, if you've been following, that uh, I had a bit of an oil leak underneath of the head while the engine was, in, was running a week or two ago. Um, I said this old gasket was smeared in oil everywhere, so whether it had been seeping through or I don't know. I'm not particularly fond of these type of head gaskets anyway. So I've got another one. Um, different type of one. I got it from a, a carting eBay shop. There's a lot of carting gear. I can't remember offhand. UK cart shop or something. We don't hold me to that. Anyway, the thickness is very similar. The uncompressed thickness of that is equal to the pretty much equal to the here uh, the compressed thickness of that one. So hopefully I should get a smidge more compression with it being a bit thinner when it's compressed. It's got this nice little bit of sporty looking beading, extra sealing. So while it's all off I've uh, taken a little bit more off the head with the old sandpaper routine. Uh, I've gone through loads of sheets of sandpaper because it just rips to shreds after a couple of minutes. And I've only got so much um, flat smooth conti board to stick it down to so I've run out of all that. Um, you can see that's a sheet of conti board there, it's very dark light, the sheet of conti board and there's some sandpaper stuck to it. Another sheet at that end there, you can't really see but I've done both sides. Got some really smooth MDF, I've had the um, spirit level on that I've been using as well. Some of it's up there, just to uh, the elbow grease routine of milling the head down. But that mill, I mean, you can't see it, but that one mill mark, you can just see it glinting there, right on the edge here. Right on the edge there, there's one mill mark I made when I first took the head off months ago. And I milled it a little bit prior to the first rebuild and probably took about half a mill off. Well, what I've done over the weekend. I've taken it pretty much down to the one mil mark, so it's about 0 0.025 an inch removed now. Ideally, I would like to have gone right down to the cooling fins, but it took me hours and lots of lots of paper, and I can't afford to go get it milled professionally. So I've done that, and I've uh, I've, I've done a final polish up with um, kitchen scouring you know, sif, jif, whatever you want to call it, on the uh, flat surface, and that's that's polished up quite nice. The few you can see there's a few little uh, casting imperfections, predominantly that one there that's coming through. Um, hopefully, it won't have any bearing on the ceiling of the new gasket. I've reground the valves as well, relapped them again, so that's all fresh, all fresh, ready to go. So, I'm going to put the head on now. I have ordered a uh, advanced 8 degree advanced time key yesterday so I will be taking that flywheel back off and putting that on so it'll be just as I stated in the video a while ago that it'll be the fin removal on the cooling fan <coughs> which I've done it's now got eight fan blade uh, eight blades on the fan as opposed to 24 milled the head a bit more and uh, what else was there well, that's it isn't it timing key cooling fan and milled the head a bit more so should be a slight increase in performance now plus I've um, I've not shown you this yet I've done what I've done with the fan blades so get the, uh, get the keys this is a bit tricky one I did no way misses losing track of what I'm doing I don't know if I already mentioned this in the video but I was going to have a mess around with it the fan blades one last time to get so I could get the, uh, the pitch angle down from 20 degrees a bit further so I can get the RPM up. So I've taken quite a lot of portion off the leading edge of the fan. So if I just zoom back a bit, so as you can see, the entire portion leading leading edge coming out is now all gone. It's allowed me to go another few degrees down so hopefully I should be at least famous last words but at least at 4000 plus rpm now and if I try and hold it square the last 
three four centimeters the, the pitch is, is, zero, is zero degree pitch there's no positive pitch on that compared to the rest of the rest of the blade but as you with the usual most props uh, the last portion of the, the the blade is inefficient anyway because the airflow is going off the edge of the tip and not generating thrust hopefully that won't have any bearing on the thrust output again that's that's famous last words so anyway that's that I'm also going to do away with the uh, the one, the one litre test tank now because I've got a five litre black tank to go in the bottom of the cage so that'll be strapped in I've also ordered a pulse pump now got some more full cord because I think that what I'm using at it's not the last two minutes got some more fuel tube in pulse pumps just at the bottom of that bag so I'm just waiting on the a brass connector so I can make up a full speed off either the, uh, the carb insulator as I did on the monster where's the carb insulator so I could make it coming off there like I did on the monster pulse feed or I might just as with the GX200 just take it off the oh, maybe trick of that that's a different design inside into the other one so it looks like I can put them on to take the pulse feed from the carb insulator then. Well, that's no that's no hardship. So that's where we're up to now then folks. So I'm gonna start rebuilding. I won't put the carb on until I decide if I'm definitely taking the pulse feed from that. I could take it from where the governor comes out, but there's more chance of getting oil in that. I don't really don't want that. So anyway, that's enough of me ranting and uh, I'll get this head fitted. I'll see you later. Right, the head's back on. I uh oiled the threads um, as the uh, the carton chaps do as a video on um, <coughs> I think ARC racings I think they're cart tracks channel or something and he recommends oiling the, the threads make sure you, you get a good uh, torque setting so they're all 25 foot pounds torque down the heads got a new cord because the other one was on its last legs I just thought I'd give it a quick fit up, just so you could see what it's like with a new blade profile and also the uh, the fuel tank in situ. Try and get some black uh, rope, cord, whatever, just to so it doesn't stand out as much. Just That's just what I don't want to line around, a bit of washing line. There's a bit of play in the, the tank, it will kind of slide left and right on the base, but it's not going to come undone. It's, it's, well, it's well sat in, there's no way it's going to physically come undone. So oh, yeah, oh, I've the pulse pump as well. I'm not sure on this type if that, that's the pulse feed, but I'm not sure if that's the fuel out or the fuel in. But I've, I've, I can always rejig it. That's it's just on for now anyway. So there we go. That's what it's looking at the moment. So as soon as I get the uh, the, the pulse, the brass pulse connector thing is churned up, and I can sort out the tubing. And so, to get a clunk weight for the fuel tank or maybe just uh, drill through a, um, a cap head bolt or something as a clunk weight, I don't know, I'll sort something out, I always do. So anyway that's what it's like at the moment, so I'll catch you later, bye.